Hello. Hi and welcome to the Geek Legion of Doom. This is the B Movie Review and today we're going to be looking at the Vampire Journals. No, sorry, this isn't the Vampire Diaries, it's the Vampire Journals. There's a difference. So this is a 1997 film by Full Moon Productions and only self-respecting B Movie fans can know that's Charles Band's company. Now, before I go into the, really the plot of this film, I want to go through a little bit of um, some things that may put you off. I'm going to do this before the plot because this film is actually um, one of the better B-movies that I think are available. Now, Full Moon, Full Moon Productions produced a lot of B-movies. It's pretty much their MO. Uh, and I have to say, as a general rule of thumb, I thought Full Moon Productions generally produce a high quality of, of uh, B-movies than some of the other production houses. And this particular film is one of its better better jobs out of the whole its whole catalogue. So now it obviously is about vampires. Um, now the first and main criticism I'll say that you as a viewer may have of this film, especially if you've not seen this film before, is it kind of maybe hasn't aged particularly well. Um, now, it was, as I say, it was filmed in 97, but it has a kind of, it almost looks like it was filmed before that, and almost sort of in the, maybe the late 80s. Some of the hairstyles and sort of fashion choices and the way the sort of, um, uh, the, the sort of set design is, it looks almost like a sort of a, a rock music video. You've got lots of sort of dry ice and things like that. So some of the sort of the visual aspects of it kind of look a bit old. So if you're one of those people who kind of really like, only like the sort of modern horror films and that sort of thing, um, you probably may be a little bit put off by that. Now, I really urge you to try and sort of get past that because it, this is a good film. Um, but there's a couple of other bits and pieces that I kind of want to go through you first that may put some people off. So that was the first one. So the second one, now this is really only going to apply if you live in the UK and you're probably aged 35 or more. The main bad guy in this is called Ash, and he's played by Jonathan Morris. And if, you, if you're in the UK... You'll believe but know him from the sitcom Bread. Now, the reason why I mention this is in the UK, this is what he's best known for. And his character in Bread was a very sort of goofy, sort of like almost campy kind of um, almost halfwit type character. Uh, and when I watched this back when it was first released with my then girlfriend, she couldn't get over the fact that this this character was, was played by the same actor and he was she sort of almost just wouldn't buy the role almost. So this obviously not going to affect everyone, but um, if you ha if you kind of liked Bread back and that was on, you may be a little bit. It may take you out a bit because he really was. That was the only real role, certainly in those days, that that he was really known for. He's done stage in a few other films and, and bits and pieces, but generally speaking, it was it was Bread. Um, the, the the other thing is the next thing is this is actually a spin off from another film franchise. Now again, don't let this put you off. Film franchise is called Subspecies, and this actually has uh, some connections to that, but it's not really related into any way that you'll notice. If you you're um, if you're a fan of the Subspecies films, you'll kind of get a few name checks, but you can completely watch this as a separate film and not ever watch the Subspecies, and you will not lose anything from it. However, if you do, and if you do like watch this film and you haven't seen this sort of species, I would recommend checking them out because they are kind of a similar sort of vein. Ah, little pun there. Did you see that? Um, really, the only other critic. Well, there's two more criticisms, I suppose. The, the other one just these are more sort of small ones, to be fair. The first scene in this film, the very very first thing you'll see, is a flashback, and it's possibly the scene in the film. It's it's a, a little bit cheesy. It was very cheesy. Uh, and I think it can maybe, if, if you're one of those people who sort of puts a D with you and you start watching it, it may put you off because it's just a little bit, a little bit crappy to be honest. With you. The way it comes across is a bit goofy and uh, and and very cheesy to be honest with you. So I recommend you kind of just really ignore that first that first scene and kind of make wait until you get into the proper plot and stuff, and then you kind of get sucked into it a little bit more. And then the last thing I would really say is a criticism for this film, but then th this isn't a criticism as such. This is just going to be something that some people are going to like and some people aren't. This film is a very, very slow paced film. There isn't real, well, it's obviously about vampires, but I, I'd be stretched to call it a horror film. There are a couple of gore shots and a couple of decapitations and, uh, and obviously sucking in the blood and things like that, but it's not a particularly violent film. Uh, there's not really much like horror as such. Um, there's not a great deal of action. There's 
probably one fight scene um, really in the entire in the entire film. So if you like in these sort of blade underworld type films, um, this is probably not going to be the film for you. It's most similar sort of, of ilk if, if you like to the vampire, where it's that very sort of like gothic sort of romanticism. Sort of very classical vampires, that sort of things, really from sort of older literature and things like that. Even might be like Dracula, I suppose. Um, so it's very much in the kind of same sort of style of film as, as those type of, of, of films. So if you like those ones, then I, I'd wager if you can get past the other issues I've just spoke about, you will like this one as well. So I'll tell you a little bit about the plot now. So really, it centers around two vampires. The bad guy is played by Jonathan Morris, called, and he's called Ash. And he's in the music lover, and he is uh, what they call a master vampire. He's been around a long time. He, he mentions he's been around he for at least so seven hundred. He's, he's, you know, he's pretty old, uh, and he lives in um, a, a kind of big sort of house layer type place with uh, um, all his all his kind of like uh, proteges, people who he's turned and who sort of who serve him essentially. Uh, also living with him, and there are a few humans that that kind of maybe do his bidding during the day, or are kind of willing, sort of blood suck, you know, blood sucking victims or whatever. So he's kind of rich and decadent, and very sort of articulated, very gentlemanly, uh, very sort of charming. That sort of old worldly way. Um, and on the flip side of the coin, you've got the kind of the, 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 the I guess the hero of the piece. And he's a he's a character called Zachary. Now, he's actually a vampire too, but he's a little bit different from the other vampires uh, in the fact that he's kind of retained some of his humanity, and he actually hates what he is. He hates the fact that he's a vampire, and he actually has made it his mission in life to essentially exterminate all other vampires. And he's actually this is the reason why he's come to um, this, this city is the if he's tracked Ash there, and he wants to sort of kill him. Now. What you then have is you have a because Ash is this music lover, he sort of becomes infatuated with his pianist, like an American pianist is playing, and essentially he wants to seduce her and ultimately turn her into a vampire. Um, now Zachary, the, the 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 hero vampire, he's already there to sort of try and destroy Ash anyway, so he sort of almost takes it upon himself to try and defend um, this this sort of this this woman as well. Uh, now she actually does get sort of seduced into his kind of lair, and there he sort of starts this sort of seduction and really and kind of really forcing her to, be, to become a vampire. And she's kind of resisting to a to a certain degree, uh, but obviously you know he's he's a powerful vampire. Um, now, really the the kind of the, the I guess the plot of the story is that is this is Zachary's attempt to try and kill Ash and his minions and rescue the girl. But to be quite honest with you, that almost takes a back seat because a lot of this sort of subplots are really to do with the sort of the um, the, the goings on within the sort of the vampire sort of community. There's lots of backstabbing. There's lots of sort of sub characters. Um, probably the best one is like one of Ash's female proteges, kind of this uh, who uh, kind of crazy, not quite with it, sort of um, and fairly unpredictable um, female vampire. And she reminds me a little bit of Drusilla from the Buffy series, if you've ever, ever seen that. Um, I don't know if that was, uh, Drusilla was at all based on this character, I don't know, but, uh, you know, it's kind of that kind of, that kind of character. She's actually pretty great, to be honest with you. But you've also got a, a human uh, female who kind of is the, in charge of the, sort of the, the day-to-day runnings of the, they have like, you know, there's a club and a casino and stuff in this, uh, in this establishment. Um... So there's lots of like backstabbing, kind of all these little little problems that they have sort of within this this little little vampire community. And so they see the almost the political side of it, and that actually takes up quite a bit of the film. So this is what I mean. It's not a particularly fast moving film. It's a very interesting film. Now one of its main strengths, this film, is the the way it's shot. Um, it was filmed in Eastern Europe, and you can it really does benefit from that because some of the you know the exteriors, just the feel of the film is very old worldy. Um, you, know, you can get you get that classic sort of vibe from it. Um, so really good. Now the performances, I would say, are, are fairly fairly good across the board. And then there's there's not really any any sort of bad performances. And maybe a, a couple of extras with a few lines here and there. Maybe they don't deliver them particularly well. But 
the main cast certainly I think are, do you know an absolutely fine job. I want to talk a little bit about exactly. the kind of the um, the main sort of like hero I, I guess. Uh, he's played by an actor called David Gunn, and he's a um, very very interesting looking looking guy. Now obviously he's got makeup and stuff on and kind of fangs and whatnot. But he's got he's a very distinctive look he's quite um very kind of sharp features and kind of almost looks a little bit sort of bony and you know the shots when we have the sort of the lighting with him he looks absolutely fantastic as a vampire now he looks quite menacing um but he's actually the, the hero probably looks far more menacing than ash who is the bad guy who's kind of very sort of uh, pretty boy looking so it's a really interesting it really interesting look um so, uh, you know, it's you don't get much back. So you see a few flashbacks from him to kind of get an idea of what's happened to him. But you don't, it's not really explained how he's managed to sort of like retain this kind of like um, more humanity, whilst other vampires don't seem to do that. There you go. Kind of as the mystery, I suppose. Um, so, as I said... It's a kind of slow moving film, very, very sort of gothic and very atmospheric. I think if you're a vampire fan, you can kind of get over these, some of the issues that I've just spoken about. You'll really get a kick out of this film. It's, you know, it's a very enjoyable film and you kind of get sucked into the world. Um, it's a shame that it, it was never expanded upon um, with a sequel. Some of the characters do appear in um, a later subspecies film. But it's more that's more to do with their own story rather than anything that happens in here and it actually contradicts something that happens in this film as well. So um but there you go, we can kind of look past that. So really you can look at this as a as a, as a separate film or you can look at that as, as this part of this sort of film franchise, this subspecies film franchise. Um I'd be really interested to hear uh, your thoughts if you've seen this film, how do you think it compares to other vampire films? How do you think it compares in the subspecies film series? I personally think this is probably a better film than in person. So I do what like Radu from that, that that series of films. Um, and how does it compare to the more modern and more the, the bigger budget films like Interview with the Vampire? Um, leave me a comment. I look forward to seeing you next time. I'll give this film an eight out of ten.